Good morning again, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'd like to now introduce our next speaker, who is Pat Brazil from Transport Scotland. Pat is a chartered civil engineer and project manager with Transport Scotland's A9 dueling team. Uh, he is also project manager for the first section of the A9 to be duelled as part of the A9 dueling programme, uh, the £35 million King Craig to Dalrazi project, which became fully operational in September 2007, sorry, 2017. He's also responsible for the procurement of the A9 Dueling Advanced Works Framework Agreement, which will see works undertaken to prepare the route in advance of the main construction works. So I'd now like to welcome Pat to the stage. Thank you all. Good morning. I'm uh, pleased to be here to speak to you about the A9 Dueling programme and what opportunities, particularly for SMEs, um, will be available. Um, this presentation should only take about 20 minutes or so, so we should have some time for questions um, at the end and also give you an opportunity to get out and meet some of the other buyers before the next speaker. So today's presentation, I'm going to talk about um, who Transport Scotland are, what the role we play is, um, the A9 Julian programme, what it is, the benefits it offers, an update on the progress to date, um, and a little bit about what we're doing going forward, then how SMEs can benefit from, how some SMEs have benefited from recent projects and how to access some forthcoming opportunities. As was mentioned, I'm the project manager for the A9 Dueling Concrete to Dalrady project, which is the first section to be dueled as part of the A9 Dueling programme. I'm also a procurement manager for the A9 Dueling Advanced Works Framework, which will facilitate advanced works on the A9 over the next four years. So who we are, so I'm going to talk to you a bit about who Transport Scotland are, what we do and what our objectives are. So Transport Scotland is the National Transport Agency for Scotland. We have the responsibility for all types of transport links, from trunk road network to rail, from maritime to air, to active travel and low carbon transport sector. We seek to deliver a safe, efficient, cost effective and sustainable transport system for the benefit of the people of Scotland, playing a key role in helping to achieve Scottish Government's purpose of increased sustainable economic growth with opportunities for all of Scotland to flourish. How, how, what our objectives for Scotland are? As we work towards the Scottish Government's goal, which is to focus government and public services to create a more successful country with the opportunities for all of Scotland to flourish to the increase, increasing sustainable economic growth. This is demonstrated by the significant investment over the last number of years. Since 2007, almost 20 billion has been invested in transport infrastructure and services. 8.2 billion of that has been in motorway and trunk road network. So this slide gives a bit of a breakdown of how that money was spent last year. So in 2017-18, 2.4 billion was invested in transport Scotland or in transport in Scotland, and 40% of that, almost 967 million, was in the motorway and trunk road network. This funded construction and improvements. Um, fronted, sorry, this funded construction and improvements, winter maintenance, safety improvement programs, information for road travellers an emergency response facility. There was also significant investment in other areas, which is 777, 775 million in the rail, funded rail passenger services to the Scott Rail and Caledonian Sleeper franchises, including procurement of new trains. It also funded network rails operation, maintenance and renewal of the rail infrastructure in Scotland and delivery of major enhancement projects. 255 million on concessionary fares and bus services, funded bus service operation grant, the National Concessionary Travel Scheme, and supported organisations working to improve transports, public transport. 181 million of ferry services supported the Scottish Government's ferries plan, including lifeline services, the road equivalent tariff, and grants for ports improvement works. The remainder was invested in other transport policy and projects, including, including air services. So what are our priorities at the moment? Well, we are an agency of the Scottish Government and are accountable to Parliament and public through the Scottish Ministers. Our priority is to connect Scotland and improve reliability and journey times 
and maximise the opportunities for employment, business, leisure and tourism. So that's who we are. Now I'm going to move on to the A9 Julian programme. I'll talk about what it is and the benefit it offers, the progress to date and then how to get involved. The picture you can see on screen shows a map of the programme and the sectors and the sections it's split into for the statutory process. You can see the third from the top is the King Craig to Dalradi project, which I managed and opened last year. And at the bottom, the Lunkerty to Pass a Burnham project, which is the next section to start construction. So what is the A9? It's a vital strategic route linking central Scotland and Inverness, Highlands and Islands. Approximately 10 million tonnes of goods are transported on the A9 each year, and the A9 also sees traffic flows increase by up to 50% during the summer months, demonstrating how important this strategic route is to the Scottish economy. The A9 between Perth and Inverness is a 110-mile route with approximately 30 miles of existing dual carriageway, and the £3 billion A9 dueling programme works will upgrade the remaining 80 miles of single carriageway to dual carriageway. This will develop, deliver benefits such as reduced journey times and improved journey time reliability and also improve safety for motorists and non-motorised users by reducing accident severity and reducing driver frustration. It is also expected that the investment will also act as a catalyst to attract significant inward investment and stimulate continued growth of businesses, communities, especially the tourism industry along this key route. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about the prog progress we've made to date. The image over, you can see on the screen, is an aerial view of an upgraded underpass uh, to the south of the King Creek to Dalradi project. And you can also see Loch Inch in the background. So the A9 King Creek to Dalradi project was the first section to be jeweled as part of the A9 jeweling programme. The £35 million contract for the design and construction was awarded to a joint venture of Wills Brothers Civil Engineering and John Paul Construction in June 2015. This was part of the overall £43 million investment for the project. The dual carriageway became fully operational in September 2017, which introduced a dual carriageway in which was the longest stretch, which is nearly 50 kilometres, of undueled A9 north of Cruber Moor. It will provide safer overtaking opportunities, reduce driver frustration, and will support businesses, communities and tourism through Scotland by improving access to the Highlands. The A9 Dueling Advanced Works Framework Agreement, which has already facilitated advanced works on the A9 Lunkerty to Pass a Burnham project, will enable advanced works to commence on the A9 over the next four years. It's divided into three separate lots. The first lot, Lot 1, for civil engineering works valued at under 250,000 has been concluded with three contractors, INH Brown, McGowan Environmental Engineering and Story Contracting. A first package of work for demolition on Lunkerty to Pass Burnham was completed in May and was undertaken by a local Perth contractor, INH Brown. The second package of work for site clearance works also on Lunkerty to Pass Burnham was awarded in July also to INH Brown and is currently underway. Lot 2, which is for civil engineering works valued between 250,000 and 2 million, is currently at tender stage and tenders are due to be submitted next week. Once tenders have been evaluated, it is expected this lot will be concluded with four contractors over the coming months. And Lot 3 is for specialist piling works valued at less than 350,000 and we are currently in the, in the process of concluding the framework agreement with two successful contractors. All of these works will allow us to untake smaller packages of works in advance of the main construction contracts. These could be things like installing temporary, permanent fence, temporary or permanent fencing, building new or upgraded um, drainage systems, access tracks and other small minor works like that. This means, that every, this means any work that can be done at the moment is being done. The A9 Lunkerty to Pass a Burnham project, which is the next to go to construction, this project will widen the A9 over a length of 9.5 kilometres and this will provide 15 kilometres of continuous dual carriageway between Inveralman Roundabout and the Pass of Burnham. Last week we announced our intention to award the con construction contract for this section to Balfour Beatty. 
This marks the final phase in the procurement process which saw bids submitted from Dragados, Wills Brothers Civil Engineering and a joint venture of Farns Construction and Roadbridge. Subject to the mandatory standstill period, we will conclude with contract with award of the contract in the coming weeks. This £62 million construction contract forms part of the £96 million investment for the project. And this will be the second project to go to, to be awarded, second construction contract to be awarded as part of the A9 Julian programme. Advanced works including demolition, utility diversions and site clearance are already underway with the main constructed, construction expected to start later this year. In planning and design, as you can imagine, a programme of work at this scale requires a significant amount of planning and design development. Three major design contracts are in place for the northern, central and southern areas and the, and the design work on the remaining parts of the dueling programme is progressing well. Draft orders are now published for almost all of the remaining sections. As part of the scheme development, 16 contracts with a total value of nearly 24 million have been awarded for ground investigation work to date and others are planned to be carried out over the coming years. So what's next? Well, as the remaining sections come through their statutory process, we'll be able to commence with the procurement competitions. We're currently finalising the overall procurement strategy for the remainder of the programme. However, this is dependent on how and when the remaining sections complete the statutory process. But however we procure the future A9 contracts, we expect that they will be awarded by large companies or joint ventures of multiple large companies. That said, whoever is awarded the future contracts will require SME assistance. This is part of our commitment to, S to SMEs. So Transfer Scotland plans to deliver its procurements to encourage and facilitate opportunities for SMEs, third sector organisations and supported businesses. This is required under the Sustainable Procurement Duty Act, which requires sustainable procurement to maximise the social, environmental and economic benefits through effective, efficient procurement activity. This commitment is detailed in our corporate procurement strategy, which is available on our website if you wish to talk, look into it some more. So now I'm going to talk about recent examples of uh, benefits on the A9 dueling for SMEs. So on the Concrete to Dalradi project, the £35 million construction contract to design and construct the scheme was won by Giant Venture Wills Brothers Civil Engineering and John Paul Construction in June 2015. On contracts of this size, SMEs can benefit from the trickle-down effect as the main contractors cannot un undertake all aspects of the work in-house. Along with large subcontracts for pavement and artworks, eight local companies benefited from smaller contracts totalling 1.4 million. So if you think about it on that scale for a £35 million contract and scale that up to over a £3 billion programme, there will be significant opportunities available for local suppliers. So there is a lot of industry involved in building roads on this scale. Apart from the more obvious civil engineering sector, there is a long list of um, other supply chain requirements. Examples of subcontracts available can include temporary and permanent fencing, cleaning of site offices, cabins, welfare facilities, vehicle fleet management, IT and wireless networking, office consumables, clothing, which include PPE or project branding clothing, um, traffic management and security. There's also significant benefit to local communities and local employment. At peak, the A9 Concreted Already project supported 168 site-based jobs, many of which came from the surrounding area. And over the course of the project, it averaged approximately 130 site-based jobs over the two-year period. This included a minimum of two graduate positions and three apprenticeships, and job centres were notified locally of site-based opportunities. So again, on a project of, um, of the scale at King Craig, those are the kind of benefits employers or SMEs and local employment can, can get and if you scale that up over all of the rest of the remaining schemes there's a significant amount of opportunities available. So how to get involved? Well, all Transport Scotland projects are advertised in the Public Contract Scotland portal. Our main works contracts are also contractors are also required to advertise all opportunities for contracts with subcontractors and suppliers that are not already allocated at the time of contract award through the Public Contract Scotland portal. 
Therefore, I'd urge anyone interested in working on the A9 or any other Transport Scotland project to register on the Public Contract Scotland portal and select the appropriate codes for your work area. Transport Scotland's contract register is also available on Public Contract Scotland portal, so you can see what contracts we have available. Throughout the procurement, the shortlist of bidders and ultimately the winning bidder are listed on our website, so check regularly to see who is bidding for the work and the contracts and, you may, and who has won the contracts and you may be able to contact them directly to offer your services. So even if you haven't, even if you don't get the first contract, um, you can still benefit from applying. You should always seek debriefs and bids, whether that is from Transport Scotland or our contractors. These will help you to understand why you won or lost the tender. This will also help you identify how you can improve your submissions and increase your chances of getting future work. This will drive improvements in your businesses. You can also give feedback. We at Transfer Scotland are always eager to receive feedback to help us to improve our services and processes, so you can feel free to make contact and let us know your thoughts. So, in summary, there are some real opportunities for SMEs on the A9 Dueling Programme. I would advise you to register on the PCS website and enable alerts to see what is coming up, and this will help you plan um, for submitting your tenders. Find out who is, bidding for, who is bidding and who has won the big contracts and make contact to see if you can offer your services. It's always important during, that, um, during the tender phase and the dialogue phase when we have four or five bidders bidding for a contract, you contact them at that stage and you may be able to offer an innovative solution that they can bring forward before contract award. Um, also give yourself ample time to complete the tender submissions and whether you win or not, make sure that you win, make sure you get debriefs. So I hope you found that useful. And if anyone has any questions, um, I can take them now, or I can take them away and answer them later. <laughs>